KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Tano Program. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime limited powertrain warranty. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Coming up on Primetime, a 64-year-old woman is the island's 19th COVID-related death. Plus, with the number of COVID patients needing critical care rising, we'll give you an update from the administrator of Guam's only public hospital. And one Democrat lawmaker is asking the Leon Guerrero administration where the money is after touting a surplus of almost $36 million. Half a day and good evening. Guam has recorded another COVID-19-related fatality. The latest person to pass is a 64-year-old female with comorbidities compounded by the coronavirus. According to the Joint Information Center, she tested positive for the virus on August 25th at Guam Regional Medical City and was transported to GMH on the same day. She passed away just before 3 o'clock this afternoon. This marks Guam's 19th COVID-related casualty. The Guam Memorial Hospital continues to peak at capacity as hospitalization rise and more and more people are in need of critical care. GMH Administrator Lillian Posadas provides the latest COVID census. We've got really, really sick individuals in the hospital and you know they continue to come in. As of Tuesday morning, GMH Administrator Lillian Posadas reports there are 51 COVID patients at GMH. 14 are receiving ICU level of care and 12 are on ventilators. A somber reality that Guam remains under siege by COVID. And so that's what's been happening, you know. These individuals get so um, critically ill that they, they crash mm -hmm. and they go into cardiac respiratory arrest. So, we, you know, we have to call on code, code blue and resuscitate mm -hmm. them. The capacity to care for COVID patients at GMH has reached a critical level that Posadas admits decisions have been made to cut certain services. We're not going to be accepting any more uh, non-COVID ICU patients. We are strictly the IC, COVID ICU uh, unit here at GMH, and GRMC will then accept, uh, take uh, the non-COVID ICU level of uh, care patient. Although the hospital was hoping to start sending patients to the CIF or COVID isolation facility at the skilled nursing unit in Barragata Heights over the weekend, Posada says it just wasn't possible. The acute uh, and critical patients on our side here in Timuni has taken our focus and our, on our attention. Despite the fact that a contingent of off-island nurses from DOD have temporarily been sent in to help, Basada says they're still short-staffed. I know that there were several others that uh, our infection control nurse and our, infect, our employee health nurse have been sending us uh, you know, information as far as who else are out. And so those numbers probably around six or even maybe even up to 10 additional staff were out. Last week, Posadas confirmed 32 hospital staff, including nurses and doctors, were sidelined because of COVID. Some have since been cleared to return to work. Long term, however, GMH is working with the recruiting agency in California in hopes of securing up to 100 nurses to help with their shortage. Some of these nurses, Posadas says, could also be stationed at GRMC. They're going to need help, uh, of course, and so, you know, I have no problem, you know, providing assistance and support there too, because it's only for our entire healthcare system. It's not just for GMH, it's for the entire healthcare system for Guam. Five employees at the Guam Customs Field Office at the port have tested positive for COVID. We should note that is half of the staff that's normally assigned there. All 10 employees working in the field office have either been placed in isolation or in quarantine. According to agency officials, other officers and administrative support staff have been temporarily reassigned there to ensure continued operations at the port. The office has been sanitized and disinfected. Public health is conducting contact tracing. Meanwhile, the Port Authority confirmed late this afternoon a sixth employee there tested positive. The Navy confirms that sailors and civilian mariners aboard the USS Frank Cable and APRA Harbor have tested positive for COVID-19. A statement from the Pacific Fleet Submarine Force stated there's been no impact to the mission, but did not say how many were infected. Spokesperson Commander Cindy Fields said 
If someone tests positive, they are placed in isolation and close contacts have been identified and are in quarantine. Our top priority is the safety of our crew, sailors, civilian mariners, families, and the community. We live and work here in the community, which has seen positive cases. In the next couple of days, the governor's office alongside public health and the Office of Technology will be launching the Guam COVID Alert app designed specifically to aid in contact tracing, according to Public Health Information Officer Janella Carrera. What it does is it just it gives you a notification if you've been exposed to somebody who's been diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, but we'll, you know, when on the press conference date, it'll give you, we'll give you all the details about how this app works. The app uses Bluetooth to notify you if you had contact with someone who tested positive. The app also keeps your information safe by exchanging randomized Bluetooth keys that change every 10 to 20 minutes so your personal data and location remain private. The key to it is privacy. So, you know, we don't want to scare people into thinking that the government is watching you. Uh, it doesn't track your location or anything like that. Carrera says a press conference will be held on September 10th to give an in-depth look at all the features that the app has to offer. Be sure to stay up to date by following KUAM. We're now into the third week of lockdown and business organization leaders say it is time to revisit the criteria for condition of readiness closures. Chamber of Commerce Chair Christine Boletto says instead of categorizing businesses as essential or non-essential, they should be evaluated based on high risk and low risk, which would allow more companies to stay open. Also, Hotel and Restaurant Association President Mary Rhodes says six months into the pandemic and more and more companies need help to stay afloat. I think that if CARES Act money is still available, we can redirect some of that funding to assist businesses even further. Uh, but more importantly, what are we doing with those who are currently unemployed? I think that this is a window of opportunity where we can take some of those uh, unemployed individuals and get them to be trained while they're waiting to go back into the workforce. During a press conference Friday, the governor said it's up to her business advisory group to get together, discuss issues, and while they report to her, she doesn't necessarily have to be there. Boletto is part of that advisory panel. I think in the last three weeks, there's just been no economic activity, so there's been no discussion. Mm. Um, but, you know, now again, we're, we're looking at moving forward and, and we're pulling together and we're hopefully going to come up with a platform that we can introduce um, to the governor and, and seek her, her approval um, at, at ways that balance um, protecting the health and safety of our people and getting our people back to work. She says the governor's advisory group is scheduled to meet this week. In Decision 2020 news, the Guam Election Commission will be destroying all the in-office ballots that were cast for the now-canceled primary election. GEC Executive Director Maria Pangolinan provides an update. We are still receiving off-island ballots. Wow. As we receive those, we will destroy them. We will shred them. Um, when we... When, when the, law, when the law was signed that the primary election was canceled, we sent a message to all our off-island voters to let them know that the primary election was canceled. And we also assured them that we will send them their general election ballot uh, on or before September 19th. The GEC is moving forward to the November general election. Come tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. We will do ballot placement drawing for all of them, uh, that... for all the candidates where there's uh, where there's competition, where there's a contest. Right. So we will all do it via the internet. Uh, we will start contacting our candidates who will be involved in the ballot placement drawing this morning. Uh, we will send them an email and follow up with a confirmation telephone call. Okay. The commission, in the meantime, will be meeting with Public Health on Friday to discuss a safety plan for the general election. Public Health's Division of Environmental Health suspended operations at Ho'omai Restaurant in Harmon until it addresses violations noted during an inspection conducted on September 2nd. Among the observations noted in the inspection report was the appearance of an active rodent infestation and wastewater backup in the kitchen, both of which constitute an imminent health hazard 
according to inspectors. Guam Customs Director Ike Pareto was back on the job today. In July, he was placed on administrative leave after an alleged physical altercation with one of his subordinates. According to Adeloup, GPD completed its investigation and Pareto returned to duty today. Because of an ongoing criminal complaint, the director is to have no contact with the female employee involved and others involved in the complaint. He was also ordered to fully cooperate with the AG in the case. Stay tuned. We are back with more news in a moment. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. We didn't set out to make a hit. Sing our song. Cause my baby's got a lot. So let me testify. Real bourbon, no apologies. Let me testify. Wild turkey. It'll find you. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Cabo's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. Nachos come with rules, like don't take the fully loaded chips, don't hog the guac, and never take the last one. But with the Grande Nachos box from Taco Bell, you can break all the rules, because this meal's all yours. KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Welcome back. The governor's announcement last week of a $35.6 million surplus in fiscal year 2019 is Senator Joe St. Augustine asking, show me the money. The appropriations chairman says he wants the administration to explain exactly where the extra money came from and where it's going. St. Augustine says all he's asking for, especially in this tight fiscal climate, is a clear understanding of what the surplus will be spent on. The governor in a news conference last week said she plans to use it to pay down the deficit and prior year obligations. You know what they say, right? Uh, I, I trust I trust you, but I will want to verify it. That's all I asked for. It's just verification of um, what did you pay down? What were the deficit payables that you had to pay off? You can't tell the people of Guam you paid something down and you don't have a list. There's got to be a list. 35.6 million is a lot of money. Speaking of money, the governor has until Friday to take action on the fiscal year 2021 budget bill passed by senators last Monday. Since then, the administration has sent out multiple press clips pointing out specific concerns about spending shortfalls. San Augustine won't speculate on the governor's intentions, but what if she doesn't sign it? What is her justification for the veto? Then we can move from there. And if she happens to, if by luck, <laughs> that we get a revised budget, a new budget from her, and that it's workable, then we'll, then we'll take a look at that one. 
and then I've got to sit down with all my colleagues and says, okay, here's here's the new budget. What do you think on how come to work are, are you with it? What is certain is that a new budget must be passed by the start of the new fiscal year on October 1st. Otherwise, San Augustine says, the previous year's much more expensive pre-pandemic budget goes back into effect. I honestly believe my colleagues are not ready to go that route. So one way or the other, there will be a budget in our hand. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Department of Administration Director Edward Burns says they are looking into what happened on Friday, which led to a payless payday for a number of GovGuam employees. We're still investigating what, what happened because it's a long chain that goes from us through, through Bank of Guam, through to the federal system, through to credit unions. Um, but something went wrong along the way on the transmission of the funds to the credit unions. According to Byrne, all the credit unions received the funds on Saturday and these GovGuam employees should have been paid at that time. Coast 360 was one of the credit unions to come forward Friday informing the community that it had not received payroll files from the Department of Administration. In crime news, 28-year-old Edward Ace Seacat, known as Kim, was arrested after allegedly molesting several children. According to court documents, the complaint was made on August 6th by a concerned relative who was told Seacat had touched a young child at a Jigo home. Three others were interviewed and alleged Seacat also touched them between 2016 and 2019. Seacat was charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct, five counts of second-degree criminal sexual conduct, third-degree criminal sexual conduct, and five counts of fourth-degree CSC. 44-year-old Bradley Sato was arrested and charged with third and fourth degree criminal sexual conduct. According to court documents, the victim told police that on August 29th, she met Sato at the Hagatnya swimming pool and the pair got a ride down to the Assen Beach. The victim was in the jungle resting when she awoke to Sato with his pants down undressing her. She kicked him off and he ran away. The victim said she called the police, but they never came. Sato allegedly told police the woman was drunk and that he found her naked from the bottom half. Court documents state he admitted to sexually assaulting her and taking her passport when he ran. The woman spotted Sato at the Helgotnia pool on September 5th and reported him to police. Public Health's Division of Environmental Health is often overlooked as a frontline responder to the pandemic. Inspectors for the parentally understaffed agency continue to scramble to try and ensure compliance with the health emergency executive order. Imagine how much more responsibility the pandemic protocols have added to the division charged with enforcing health and safety. To keep up with violators, inspectors have to rely on the public's help. And during the current lockdown, environmental public health officer Malou Scrog says they've been getting a lot of calls about large group gatherings. That's the most number of complaints that we receive is con uh, people uh, congregating or not complying with the social distancing. So if there's a lot of cars parked in establishment or a business that not authorized to, to open, that's when we get down and also check if they are complying with executive orders. Staff are trained on how to disperse a crowd and how to defuse a situation if needed, but Chief Environmental Health Officer Tom Nadeau says it's typically not needed. Generally, people don't, you know, their, their understanding of our responsibility, though they may not agree to the requirements. Uh, it's rare that we actually encounter a situation where GPD is called, but we do so currently only because of just to ensure that the ensure the safety of everyone. Mm -hmm. And I say everyone, not just our inspectors, but everyone involved who's on premises. Also getting some public scrutiny are businesses that appear to be bending the rules, advertising sales of non-essential items. Nido says it comes down to an honor system. The rule of thumb is if your business is, uh, has merchandise 80% or more that's deemed essential, then you may operate. Right. Okay, so, but that's, no a, that's a very difficult for us to assess. So we are trusting the businesses to do their part and to ensure that they meet and comply with that requirement. If you found uh, that they're in violation, uh, we cite them and um, it has to be corrected on the spot or we give them uh, 24 hours to correct the violations. Then um, our policy is if it's a repeat violation, 
We will cite them again and we'll refer them to the AGIS office. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Coming up, we check in with local nonprofit Rainbows for All Children. You're watching KUAM. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. We give most of our waking hours to preserve yours. When we're in it, nothing exists but you and the person that needs your help. It can be difficult at times. You can't help but take the weight of what you've seen home with you. There are days or nights that I need to leave it all behind, to let it go in the wind. But I'll always come back. I am a first responder, and I have given my life to this. House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. All right, House to Home is back once again. Now, if you remember last week, we were talking with Joe Borja, the esteemed director of the Department of Land Management. He is here once again to um, stand in front of what would be the... Um, I don't want to use the word firing line, but the, but the very, let's say the very, the very industrialist inquisitive, the industrial inquisitive minds of uh, Liz and Gina from Remax Diamond Realty. We're, we're, we're being silly, Joe. I mean, you guys work together all the time. There are some questions that they have and everything like that. It is a process. And given the tense nature of, of the world these days and everything like that, you know, things are a little weird and everything. I, I, I never view you know? uh, I never view questions from Liz and Gina as a firing line. I I mostly use it as a Joe, let me take your hand and uh, let me guide you. <laughs> well, that's a great way to start. Okay, and so uh, Liz, you're up first. <laughs> With that said, so Joe, our our concern is, um, for example, we have a pending project. Uh, we can't close transactions until. GLUC meets to approve, for example, an HPR that was extended. So there's timelines with the banks to close the transaction and they've held off. And uh, we need GLUC in place. So I know that's not your purview, but we probably should, what, hound the legislature and the governor to do what they can to get things in place so that you can do your part in scheduling uh, those hearings and get these projects approved. My concern is lots of money is, is uh, held up. And from what I heard, millions for pending projects uh, that are being tied up until such time GLUC can entertain them and move and make decisions on these projects. Is that correct? That's correct. My job right now is to make sure that the support mechanism in the Department of Land Management is ready to proceed when the board, you know, sets up that meeting. Once, once the board sets up that meeting. Uh, from the administration side, you know, we, we have the five names. Uh, the one name is yet to be submitted, and I think the governor will be doing that fairly soon. Uh, the two seats on the GOUC require, con uh, require a, a, a confirmation hearing. Uh, we're right at the perfect storm. We're right at the budget hearing. So the, 
legislative focus is on the budget. And then, of course, right after the budget here in a month or so would be the election again on this. So for this year, beginning in February, it was kind of like a perfect storm. GLUC uh, members term expiration, March, April, we're still within that COVID thing. Uh, we got our numbers down and then we're kind of like ready to open up. We were, we were working with our consultants to hopefully have some uh, uh, public hearings out there, but you know. When you want to make the most of your time, waiting in line should be last on your mind. Introducing Skip Lino, the most convenient way to visit Docomo Pacific. Simply download the Skip Lino app on your device, set your region to Guam or Northern Mariana Islands, find Docomo Pacific, and select the location you'd like to visit. Spend less time in line and more time with the people who matter most with the Skip Lino app. Can't wait to see you soon. Docomo Pacific, better together. Welcome back. This morning on the weekly segment, Health and Wellness Matters, Rainbows for All Children Executive Director Marie Halloran spoke on what the organization has been doing to help children with September being Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. I have scheduled a few or some schools to do suicide awareness prevention and, and um, postvention classes. So uh, next week, we, we are scheduled to go to about, I think about six schools and six schools with about four classes each. So we are, we are very active. I know that suicide is such a, it's a tragedy. It's a, it's a big loss for lives, but then we can do something. I think a lack of awareness, we need to be uh, consistent about doing the awareness. And, and that's what we're doing for the rest of the September. Mm -hmm. And I think that Father Jeff and I are planning to do a, a video probably over at the church, at St. Anthony Church. So we're planning something that we could still hold something very um, solemn in memory of those that have died from suicide. In fact, I have called some of the uh, survivors of suicide and they're, they still want to do something for their loved ones. Mm -hmm. What are... Um since we are talking about awareness, if you could just share with us, what are, what are some of the, the signs um, that you kind of would know? Okay, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, right now, go to the schools, I would share with them. Uh, instead, sometimes instead of saying signs, maybe what are the invitations that the, someone who's thinking of harming themselves would show? So let's talk about the three, let's say they, they're talking, they're communicating with you like, you know, I don't want to leave anymore. So those are classical signs. Or let's say if they, uh, their behavior have changed, sometimes like um, if they're very uh, friendly with other people, they, they're a chatterbox and then all of a sudden they're silent and and not a single word, they stay in the room the whole day. So that's another sign that you could see. Or sometimes they would write notes. You know, as parents, I think we should be very, very careful that we are involved with, the, with our kids or on what they, what they write or what they say. Or in their drawings, you know. When I was over at the, uh, the school, as a school, uh, school nurse, I could see children drawing really, really um, violent things or something like very, very sad, depressed uh, uh, drawings. So those are red flags right there. Mm -hmm. um, their actions, if they were, you know, they were kind and compassionate, then all of a sudden they're belligerent and angry all the time. Mm -hmm. That's their sign. What about? So there are a lot of things that you could. What about yeah. Marie? You know, uh, uh, nowadays a lot of people they're not necessarily a lot of kids aren't necessarily uh, drawing right or, or things like that. They're on social media, and they're posting things on social media. Is that something we should we oh, should yes, uh, yes. look for in terms of what they're actually posting? That would kind of give yes. us a, a, an idea. That's why um, 
I am very active in Facebook because some of the kids are posting something that's really posting a red flag. And, you know, sometimes, what do we do about these things? Okay, what I usually do if this is one of my students or a parent, I know the parent, I would, I would talk to the parent. And another thing that is so important is how you communicate, how you connect, and how you care about that student or, or the person that's thinking of suicide. You can watch that interview in its entirety on our YouTube channel. Stay tuned, your birthday shout outs next. Nachos come with rules, like don't take the fully loaded chips, don't hog the guac, and never take the last one. But with the Grande Nachos box from Taco Bell, you can break all the rules, because this meal's all yours. Home, a place where I can go To take this off my shoulders Someone take me home Home. It's more than wood, square footage, and a floor plan. It's where life happens, and moments become etched into memories. At Bank of Hawaii, we're proud to help families all across Guam buy and improve their home. Applying takes just a few moments, but the memories last a lifetime. Simplified by Bank of Hawaii. Welcome to tomorrow. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. Our island is a gift that we have shared with the world. But in the stillness of today, our island is asking everyone to give us a moment. To be with our family. If I'm a Gonte, our children, our grandchildren, it are not our land, our thoughts. To be creative. Fan Hongi, to have faith. To be with the things we know. And the things you've come to love. Give us a moment and we will share one together soon. Welcome back. Before we close out the news, here's your latest round of birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. On this Tuesday, September 8th, we say happy birthday to Melvin Timonglow. I am so proud of you and all you've accomplished in life. Hope you enjoy your day. Take care and be safe. Love and miss you. Conan Titanfong, happy third birthday. Wishing you nothing but the best on your special day. We love and miss you. Isabella, we love you so much, baby. Wishing you the happiest of birthdays during this quarantine. We wish you many blessings and more, says your loving family. 
Also, Rosa Quintanilla Cabrera, happy, happy 88th birthday to Grandma Chai. Love your familia. We also have a lot of belated birthdays. So here we go on behalf of all of us at KUM and Coldstone Creamery. Scotty Duaneus, born yesterday, our true meaning of Labor Day. Happiest of birthday blessings to this kid who smiled determination, stole our heart 27 years ago, Scotty. We love you endlessly. Quit quitting and continue to make this crazy world have meaning, son. And happy birthday from all of us at your KUM Familia. Aiden Jean, also born on the 7th. Happy B-Day Fat Boy. Love always, Mommy Tasha, Daddy, and your siblings. They say they love you forever and then put a really big blue heart emoji. Nice job. Jesse Bamba, happy birthday number 52 to the best papa ever. We love you so much. From your six boss babies, Josiah, Michaela, Jace, Jayen, Dre, and Drew. Stephanie Morrison, born on September the 6th. Happy birthday, Steph. We love you. Odd, Ness, and Joni. Gabriel Artemis Manas, born on the 6th. Happy birthday number 9 with love from the family. Ariana, Jacob, Ananiah, Amia, Mommy, and Daddy. Also, happy birthday to Peter Matabusin Jr., who was born on the 6th. Happy belated, Peter boy. We will celebrate soon. And Nana, Daddy, and the Matabusin and Jackson family say they love you. And lastly, but certainly not least, we born on September 5th, Elvin Jeremiah Babalta. Happiest 13th birthday to our big brother, Sissies. Raquel and Raya are sending you their very best. And that's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks so much for watching. Please stay safe and stay home. What's up, Warm? Well, Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching NFL football season right around the corner on the show tonight. Andy Wheeler, uh, good to.